And now I'm going to my um, white, uh, to my, um, why is it? Oh, I, I see, okay, hold on one second. Share content, screen. Okay, so we're good. Anybody has a question, just holler. So um, the last time I talked about the binomial distribution, let me just review what we were talking about. And if anybody has a particular question, we'll talk about that as well. And the binomial distribution, suppose you have n trials and the probability of success is P and as always, the probability of failure will be the complement one minus P. And remember a binomial experiment has a couple of uh, characteristics. You can always classify the outcome as either success or failure. There are independent events and the probability of success is always the same. So we say, um, uh, so this is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p. So n and p are the parameters. A typical problem is what's the probability of getting exactly k successes? And I showed you sometimes you could write that if you like as to show that it depends on the number of successes and the two parameters n and p. But I showed you uh, last Wednesday that this is equal to just n choose k p to the k Q to the n minus k. And then I also showed, by the way, the special case when n equals one is called the Bernoulli distribution. I showed that it's the expected value of such a random variable is just n times p and the variance is equal to n times p times q. And that was the binomial distribution. And then I talked about um, the hypergeometric distribution. And I said, let's suppose we have, say, R red marbles and N minus R marbles of other colors. Could be a single color. And we choose little n without replacement. Then I showed and let x equal to, say, the number of red. Then I showed the probability of choosing exactly k red is equal to from the r red, we choose k. From the remaining marbles, we choose the remaining um, little n minus k over and choose n. This was a hypergeometric uh, hyper distribution. And if I call the percentage of red or the probability of choosing a red marble, uh, what is it, R over N. Then I showed, for, oh, well, actually I didn't show, I, I show it in the text because I didn't want to do all the algebra. I show the expected value is just N times P and the variance turns about to be n times p times q, I think it's n minus n over n minus one, if I remember correctly. Yes. And I make the observation that as, um, which one do I say? Uh, as capital N gets very large, the hypergeometric approaches the binomial. And if you you uh, and if you look at the text, I do an example where I actually show even when n isn't, isn't that large, this approximation is pretty good. Because as, as capital N goes to infinity, notice this term right here, for example, goes to one. If we let capital N go to infinity, remember from our calculus, this limit would just turn out to be one. And then the, um, the 
The third example, the third distribution I considered the last time was the geometric. And there I'm assuming that I have these independent trials and what's the probability as, uh, um, and what's the probability uh, and X is the first success. What's the probability that the first success occurs on the K trial? Well, in order for that to happen, the first K minus one trials must all be failure. And then we get success on the K trial. And then I showed using the, oh, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you the moment generating function for the binomial distribution turned out to be, what was it? P e to the T plus Q raised to the nth power. There is no simple formula for the moment generation for the hypergeometric. Okay. And then I use a moment generating function for the geometric to show that the um, expected value turns out to be one over P and the uh, variance turns out to be Q over P squared. And the moment generating function itself was, what was it? It was, um, uh, what did I get for it? P e to the T over, uh, was it one plus Q e to the T? Or one minus, I think it was. One minus Q e to the T, one minus Q e to the T. Please don't memorize these results. I give them all to you uh, in the text and I'll let you have them on the exam. The table at the end of this chapter, the end of the section, will be uh, given to you at the examination, your next examination. Okay, uh, as a simple example, let me do a one or two that's not in the text and then we'll continue with the other distributions. Is there's a game called Chuckaluck. You might see this if you go to your local county fair or something, uh, or you know, or if they ever have these fairs in New York City, like down in the village or something. And let me describe the fair, okay? You bet on an integer from one to six. Okay. And then you roll three dice or three dice. Okay. Now, um, um, and the and the better. Hold on. Um, let me let me let me remember what this game is. I, I've forgotten this game. Okay. If the number you bet on shows k times, you win k dollars. So, for example, suppose the number you choose you uh, you choose is the four, and suppose you get two fours and one five when you roll the dice. Well, then your number showed up two times, you win $2. If your number showed up three times, you win $3. Otherwise, if your number doesn't show up, you lose your dollar. Okay, so the question is, on average, what do you expect to win or lose in this game? Okay, so I'm going to let X equal to the player's winnings. So X can take on the values. You can lose a dollar. If your number shows up once, you win one dollar. It shows up twice, you win two dollars. Three times, three dollars. So here's your range of the random variance. Now notice X is a binomial. 
with parameters n equal to three, and the probability of success for any die is one out of six. So the probability that you would lose a dollar means from the three rolls of the dice, you get no successes. It doesn't match your number. The probability of success is zero. The probability of failure is five, six. This turns out to be 125 over 216. The probability that you win $1 means you get one match. And this turns out to be um, 75 over 216. The probability that you win $2 means you get two matches. And this turns out to be uh, 15 over 216. And the probability that you get three matches means you get three successes. Remember any number to the zero power is one, turns out to be one over 216. And the expected value here is just minus one times 125 over 216 plus one times 75 over 216 plus two times 15 over 216 plus three times one over 216. This turns out to be negative 17 over 216, which is about eight cents. So on the average, you would expect to lose about eight cents every time you play this game. So I, I did this problem because it was, I thought it was an interesting problem. Uh, I do one in the text that you should read as well. That's about uh, ESP. And you might want to look at that example. Uh, it's, it's a pretty example. Okay. I want to talk about um, another uh, another important distribution. We talked about the geometric. We actually saw the geometric earlier in the semester. Uh, what I want to talk about next is going to be the Poisson distribution. Uh, what am I having here? Oh yeah, I do a really nice example of the in the text. It's a little tricky uh, about the serial boxes. You might want to read that one. Uh, it might interest you because it's the kind of problem that showed up a lot. Okay, before I do the, uh, that, I need to do the um, Pascal's distribution. Let's just see, oh, let me spell his name right. It's either called the Pascal, some books call it the negative, um, what do they call it? The negative binomial for reasons that I don't want to talk about here. Okay. So let me begin with a problem that I'll give you the general term, okay? Suppose uh, I toss a fair die. Um, until Oh, well, let's just say it this way. And we count the number of times a three occurs, a sum of three. Okay, so a, a die is tossed, and we count the number of times a three is. Uh, Determine the probability uh, the seventh three occurs on the, what do I ask for? The 11th 
toss. Okay, let's make sure you understand the problems. I keep tossing a die. And I wanna, I wanna figure out the probability that I get my seventh success. You know, I'm, I'm talking, I'm getting the three a success on my 11th toss. So firstly, clearly every, clearly this is related in some sense to the binomial because these are independent events. Each event is either success or failure, but it's a little different. I want the seventh success to occur on the 11th toss. Well, what does that mean then? What, the, what this, so let's let X equal to the um, number of tosses required. So in this case, what's the probability that the number of tosses required is 11? That's the question. Now, for this to happen on the 11th, what does that mean? That means we need, um, if you want the seventh success to happen on the 11th toss, that means we have to have six successes in the first 10 tosses and success on the 11th toss. Well, that's easy to do. Well, if I want six, if I want six tosses in the first 10 tosses, that part clearly is a straightforward binomial distribution. So in the, I want six successes out of the first 10 tosses. The probability of success is one six, which means I want four failures. And remember independent, I want a success. This is number four. I must have a success on the last toss so that's simply one six. So in fact, the answer to this problem would be 10 to six. These two combine, I get one six to the seventh times five six to the fourth. And by the way, if those of you want an answer, I actually give you a decimal answer in the book. I don't really care what the answer is here. So let's generalize this result now that we see it. Um, let me follow what I have in the text. I use the letters. I never remember, by the way, this generally, you know, the fancy statement here. When I do a problem like this, I just look at a problem like I've just done it and I say, okay, in the first M minus one tosses, I know I want successes as binomial. But let me uh, use a notation in the text. Okay. So let x be the number of repetitions needed for a particular event to occur m times where each repetition is independent and has the probability little p, then the probability, the nth, oops, I'm using a big n here, the probability that the nth occurrence of the event occurs on the 10th 
faith, repetition is, well, let's work it out again. It's really the same problem. You want in the first K minus one repetitions, you want M minus one successes. All right, I just switched to a little M. Let me, um, let me fix that. This would be P to the M, Q to the K minus M. And then, um, okay. Actually, this, this was really M minus one. And then we multiply by P as I did before. And this gives me K minus one, M minus one, P to the M, Q to the K minus M. So that's how this came about. So I actually just proved it. Now, I never ever remember this result. When I'm asked a problem like this, I just work it out every single time. It's easy enough to do. Because I always, I never remember what M, whether um, what the K stands for, what the M stands for. But if you look at the problem I did a minute ago, we go back here. It's clear that I wanted. To, if I want six success, I wanted six successes. Well, here I wanted seven successes. So I wanted a six successes in the first and then the last one. How do I close this again? Um, Tatiana showed me the other day and I forgot. Three lines at the bottom. What do I do? Three lines. Oh yeah, I did that the first time it didn't work. Thank you. Okay. Now, so we have the negative binomial or uh, it's also called the, um, the Pascal distribution. And I now want to show you that this is just a simple generalization of the geometric distribution. And uh, let me show you how we can do this. So generally, we, we want to find out when we get the mth success. So what I could do, so x is equal to the number of repetitions until I get M, capital M successes. Okay, so what I can do is I can define X1 as the number of repetitions to the first success, X2, would be the number of repetitions from the first success to the second success. So that's really, again, it, this is X2 is the number of repetitions until I get a success again. So notice X1 is a geometric, is geometric. X2 is also geometric and so on, X of N is a number of repetitions from the M minus first to the Mth success. So then this negative or this Pascal distribution just equal to X1 plus X2 up until X of A. Now each of these X of I's is geometric with parameter P. So I know immediately, and I know for a geometric random variable, uh, I know the moment generating function for any one of these random variables was equal to P e to the T over one minus Q e to the T. Uh, well, hold on, before I even do this. Let me just make an observation, an easy one. Then I'll give you the moment generating function. Well, these are all independent events. And remember, E of X of I for geometric distribution is one over P. And V of X of I for the geometric distribution, what was it? Q over P squared, did I remember that correctly? Therefore, E of X would be one over P plus one over P 
m times, which is m over p. Again, and by independence, v of x would be the sum of all of these as well. which give me m q over p squared. And by the reproductive property of the moment generating function, we know that m of x sub i of t is equal to um, p e to the t over one minus q e to the t. And we know the moment generating function of the sum of independent random variables is the product of the independent moment generating functions. So I get this result as well. So it's interesting to see that the moment generating function, well, that, that the, that the um, random variable, the, the Pascal or the negative binomial random variable is nothing more than a generalization of the, um, um, of the geometric distribution. What geometric random variable? Okay. Uh, I need to remind you of some things from calculus, and uh, then we can go on. Anybody have any questions so far? So now we have the binomial, well, the Bernoulli distribution, which is a special case of the binomial distribution with n equal one. We have the binomial. We have the hypergeometric. We have the geometric. Um, and we have the, uh, the Pascal and negative binomial distribution. And I want to next talk about the Poisson distribution. Okay. I want to remind you that when you took calculus, you learned the following. You learned that one plus uh, one over x to the x power, and took the limit of this as x goes to infinity. And this answer, do you recall the answer? The answer to this was the number e. That was the definition of number e. And one way of thinking about this was through the compound interest formula. If you let the frequency become uh, instantaneous uh, every instant of the time, then um, this is the rate of return you get on a dollar. Now I want to generalize this result. Suppose I gave you the following problem. What's the limit of one minus lambda? I, I arbitrarily chose this um, to the n as n goes to infinity. Well, the way to handle this problem is let's let x equal to by the way, I can take a, let me write a plus one plus lambda, but it doesn't make a difference. Why don't I just say one plus a, and then I'll take a to be a negative number later. One plus a, where a is any real number. So I'm going to let x equal to a over n. Okay. Or let me let one over x equal a over n. So as this says n is equal to ax. And let's suppose for the moment A is positive, the same is true when A is negative. By the way, if this were minus infinity, the result would also be true. Well, then what happens is, as N goes to infinity, as X goes to infinity, N goes to infinity, this becomes one plus one over X. And then N becomes AX. I could rewrite this as using the laws of exponents and using my properties of limits that you learned about in calculus one. This just becomes E to the end. Okay, so that's an interesting result. So um, I have, in fact, the limit, I write it a little differently in the text, 
as n goes to infinity of one minus lambda over n. I think I need the minus sign in what ca happens in a little while to the n is just e to the minus lambda. Okay, that's one result that I'm going to assume. And another result I'm going to give you, if you took calculus too, you learned that I want to show you that um, um, e to the x can be written as a series. For any x, this is true. And this is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And this goes on forever and ever and ever, but this actually converges. So if you took calculus 2 or if you ever take calculus 2, you'll actually learn this result. So we have these two key results. Oops. About... Um, that I'm going to need. Okay. With that in mind, let me just write a little neater then. So again, so we defined one minus lambda over n to the n as n goes to infinity. That's e to the minus lambda and summation of x to the k over k factorial, k going from zero to infinity, this infinite sum happens to be e to the x. Okay, so we take the hours, those now as given. Okay, definition. X is said to be a Poisson distributed random variable with parameter lambda greater than zero if p of x equal to k is equal to lambda to the k e to the minus lambda over k factorial, where k can take on an infinite number of values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this can go on forever. Okay. Now, the first question you might ask, how do you know this is a valid probability distribution? Clearly, all these are, are, um, are numbers. If I can show their sum is equal, and they're all positive, if I can show the sum of the uh, sum of all the probabilities is equal to one, then this is a valid probability distribution. So let's look at the sum of all the probabilities as k goes from zero to infinity. My goal here is to show this is equal to one. Well, let's put this in here. This will give me lambda to the k over k factorial, and the e to the minus lambda, since it doesn't depend on k, I can take out of the sum. Now notice, this is exactly the series I gave you before, with x being replaced by lambda. So this is equal to e to the lambda. This gives me e to the zero power, which is one. So this is indeed a valid probability distribution. Moreover, I can find this moment generating function very easily. Let's look at that. So the moment generating function is e to the, um, e to the normally we say x sub i, but here that's k t. That would be the summation of e to the kt times the probability, which is lambda to the k, e to the minus lambda over k factorial, k going from 0 to infinity, 
Let's write this a little differently. Let's take out the e to the minus lambda. And then notice, I can rewrite this as lambda e to the t, all this raised to the k power over k factorial. Now notice, this is exactly the series I had before, except instead of x, I have lambda e to the t. Remember, e to the x is the summation, k going from 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. So that means m of t is e to the minus lambda. And then all of this then becomes e to the lambda e to the t. And I can write m of t is equal to e to the lambda e to the t minus 1 uh, for, the, for the assumption. Let me just make sure uh, we have this. OK. So here's a moment generating function for the Pascal for, for the Poisson random variable. So that's the first observation. Now, I can use this. I can use this to, uh, did this come out clear? Let me rewrite this. So m of t is equal to e to the lambda uh, times e to the t minus 1. OK. Now, let me just remind you, if I take the derivative of this, derivative will be this times the, der times the derivative with respect to t of e to the t minus 1. This, of course, is just going to be e to the t. And if you then compute m prime of 0, you end up with um, lambda. I'll let you do the uh, rest of the calculation. How do I get that? Because uh, if t is equal to 0, I get 1. Uh, uh, if t is equal to 0, I get 1 minus 1 here, which is 0, e to the 0. Uh, I'm sorry. 1 minus 1 is 0, e to the 0 power is 1. And here I just get e to the 0 power, which is 1. And there was a lambda that came out front. I forgot, by the way, I forgot that. Hold on. It's the derivative of the top, which gives me lambda times this. So this turns out to be lambda. Similarly, if you compute n double prime of t and set that equal to 0, you'll find, uh, I do that somewhere or other, you'll find that turns out to be lambda squared, uh, what do I get? It turns out to be uh, lambda squared plus lambda. So that tells us e of x is lambda, and v of x is lambda squared plus lambda minus lambda squared. So v of x is also lambda. So we have for the Poisson random variable, we found um, e of x is lambda, v of x is also lambda, and the probability that x equal uh, k was uh, e to the lambda. Um, lambda to the k over k factorial, k equals 0, 1, 2, and so e to the minus lambda, I'm sorry. OK, uh, how am I doing here? Fine, time is good. 
Okay, now, um, the Poisson distribution is very important in its own right, as we'll see soon enough, and we'll do some examples. Let me remark, sometimes um, we talk about per unit time, so sometimes if I replace, um, you'll see uh, when I talk about something per unit time, then I'm thinking of lambda as being per unit time, and you'll see it, it may, uh, in some cases, I'm going to replace lambda by lambda t. Um, I do that, I believe, an example a little later on, but I'll worry about that soon enough. That is, sometimes um, I'll actually write the formula this way. When lambda is given as a per unit time, let's say, um, for lambda might represent four miles per minute, for example. And I want to do my measurements in terms of hours. So then I would multiply this by a 60. So everything would be in hours. That's a correction of units. Um, pretend I didn't say anything just yet. And I'll talk about this in the, in, in the context of an example. Okay. First important remark, okay? And that's the following. Suppose we have a binomial distribution, okay? With parameters, so X is binomial with parameters N and P. I make the following claim. If N is large and P is small, then N large usually means N goes towards infinity. P is small means P is close to zero in such a way that that product, there, there's a constant product, then X approaches a Poisson distribution with lambda equal to N times P. I say this more fancily uh, in theorem eight, but I'm about to prove it, okay? So here's what I wanna show. We know the binomial distribution, the probability that X equals K is n choose k, p to the k, q, which is 1 minus p to the n minus k. So I want to show as n approaches infinity with lambda equal to np, um, X approaches a Poisson with parameter lambda. And that's pretty easy to show because if, if we now look at this and I write, I write this out, so I wanna look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial, n minus k factorial, k factorial, um, p to the k, q, which is 1 minus p to the n minus k. And now, let me remark, I can write this as follows, n times n minus 1, all the way down to n minus k minus one, that will take care of all the factorials. And P to the K uh, is gonna be, P is gonna be equal to lambda over N to the K times one minus lambda over N to the N minus K. So now what I really wanna do is I just wanna rewrite this line. 
So I'm going to rewrite this line as follows. Notice in here, there's a lambda to the K. Oh, by the way, I forgot my K factorial here. The N minus K will do all the cancel. So I can rewrite this firstly as uh, lambda to the K over K factorial. That takes care of this term and uh, this term here. Notice there's an N here, and I have N minus one terms here. And here I have one minus lambda. I could write this term as, um, break this term up into one minus lambda to the N. And then I'm going to have a one minus lambda to the minus K left over here. Oh, uh, there's an over N here. And now if I break up all these other terms, notice there's an N here. There are K terms here. So each of these terms could be written N over N times N minus one, N minus K minus one. All of these over um, N to the K. So I have on all these terms, I end up with the following. I end up with um, one minus, uh, first is one minus lambda to the um, minus, uh, to the minus K. And one, there's an N here. And then I get one minus one over N. If I do all the division, one minus two over N. And all of these, the last one will be one minus K minus one over N. Okay, I'm done. But you don't see why I'm done. Now notice, as N goes to infinity, this term goes to one, this term goes to one, this term goes to one, and all these terms go to one. This term becomes e to the minus lambda, and what's left is a lambda to the k over k factorial. So this says, this mass says that for large n with lambda equal to NP uh, binomial X may be approximated by Poisson X. So I, I hopefully, I, I think I have an example here where I um, illustrate this somewhere on the, where is that now? Um, where did I put that problem now? I just wrote it up this morning. All right, let me walk through a couple examples with you and then we'll look at it. Okay. Uh, oh, here's the one I wanted to do. Suppose, this is example number 12 in the text. Suppose 1% of all bulbs at some factory, all bulbs are defective. Okay? And suppose we, uh, we choose 100 bulbs. Determine the probability two are defective. Well, this is clearly a binomial distribution, right? Uh, X is binomial. The parameters are P is 1% of one over 100. And N is equal to 100. So the exact answer for this problem, it's a binomial, would be X equal to 2 is 100, choose 2, 1 over 100 squared times 
99 over 100 to the 98th power. And if you work this out, this turns out to be what, 1849? Yeah, 0 0.1849. Now notice in this problem, n is equal to, n is small, 1%. I'm sorry, p is small, n is 100. P is one over 100. So NP or lambda would be one. So let's approximate this by a Poisson. Well, a Poisson with, remember P of X equal K for a Poisson is lambda to the K, E to the minus lambda over K factorial. In this case, the probability X equal two is lambda is one, e to the minus one over two factorial. And this number turns out to be 0 0.1849, uh, I'm sorry, wrong one, three nine. So notice the answer is pretty good to two decimal places. And here n is relatively small. Okay, now I wanna show you the remark I made a minute ago, um, um, the following. But before I do that, let me just talk about the Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution can be used to approximate the, the, uh, the binomial distribution, but it's really a bona fide distribution on its own. For example, uh, and I'll tell you why. Let me give you some examples first. I think I cite a whole bunch in the text. Um, suppose, um, suppose, um, we look at some physical process with any, with say any in any fixed period of time, or or a, or a region in space. For example, suppose we look at the number of earthquakes occurring in a certain region during a time period of ten years, or suppose we look at the number of radioactive clicks from a radioactive detector in any one hour, or suppose we look at the number of accidents at a busy intersection during any time of the day, say during a, a one hour time period during the day. Or um, suppose we look at the, um, the number of typographical errors in the, uh, on, on any particular page in the textbook. All of these occurrences satisfy three properties, three conditions. The number of occurrences of, of these kinds of phenomena in any two or more non-overlapping time periods are independent. That is, if I look at the number of, of typographical errors, one is independent of the other during any particular time period. The probability of, of at least one occurrence of each of these phenomena in, in some fixed length is a bit about the same. And the probability of more than one of these occurrences happening is very rare. Now, any any situation that satisfies that kind of uh, occurrence, uh, those kinds of conditions will satisfy a Poisson distribution. I actually go about proving it a little bit in the text, but the proof is a little messy. For example, a typical answer, example is, um, I, use, I use the example of a switchboard. The switchboard used to be the way telephone calls would come into a large company. And the example I gave the following, is uh, this is example number 11. Suppose on the average, two telephone calls per minute, two calls per minute arrive at a switchboard. So determine the probability of no calls in a five minute interval. And then I ask uh, of so that's A, and B is of more than one call arriving in a given 30 second interval. So let's do each of these problems sort of separately. So on the first one, 
um, we want to know we're looking at a five minute interval. So we're given if you get two calls in, in a minute, in a five minute interval, how many calls will you get? You'll get 10, right? So in a five minute, over a five minute interval, lambda would be 10, the average number of calls coming in per interval. So the probability, if I let, if I let, well, let me I define this. I'm let X equal to the number of calls in a five minute interval. What's the probability that X equals zero? Well, that would just be 10. Remember the probability that x equals k is lambda to the k e to the minus lambda over k factorial. So it'd be 10 to the k e to the minus lambda over k factorial. Now this of course just turns out to be e to the minus 10. And if you use your calculator for this, it's some, um, what's that, four zeros? some really small number. Okay. Now, now in the second problem, I talk about a 30 second interval. So let Y be the number of calls in a 30 second interval. Well, if you get two calls, what was the original one? You're, you're told that you get two calls per minute. If you get two calls, in a minute, in 30 seconds, you get one call in 30 seconds. So the question here is, what's the probability that Y, what I ask is at least, uh, what was the problem? At least one call. And by the way, this is equal to one minus the probability that Y uh, um, is less than or equal to one. y equals zero plus y equals one. But now remember, lambda is now one. So this becomes one minus uh, lambda to the k e to the minus lambda over k factorial. Oh, I'm sorry, what lambda is one, right? So let me put the one. Plus uh, one to the one, e to the minus one over one factorial. So this gives me what? One minus um, two e to the minus one, which is approximately equal to zero point Two six four say. Okay, so we have the notion of a Poisson distributed random variable. I do a much harder problem in the text. It was meant for more advanced when I teach a more advanced course. That's example number thirteen. You might want to look at that. So the important thing to remember is um, a Poisson distribution may be used to approximate a by a binomial distribution when n is small, n is large and p is small, or in its own right, when things occur, when you have these physical phenomena, for example, I ask, let's look at the number of scars in a certain volume of space. And x might be the number of meteors, or the number of meteors appearing in a certain area of space. So lambda would be the number of meteors per second or per hour, depending on your time interval or the number of topographical errors on a page, or uh, the number of clicks, say, uh, a radioactive meter displays in a certain area, or the number of earthquakes in, in five years in a certain location on the earth, or the number of misdirected letters that a local post office makes in any week. All those can be modeled by a Poisson distribution. Okay. 
one last uh, one last distribution file, discrete distribution here, and then we will examine all the more popular um, distributions. There are other ones, by the way, as well uh, that I don't want to talk about here. Uh, sometimes I mention them in the exercises, but I just want to focus on these. I want to remind you, we talked about earlier in the course, we talked about the multinomial coefficient. And remember, uh, an example, suppose I had 12, 5, fact, uh, 5, 3, 8, 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Notice the numbers in the bottom add up to the top. This would be 12 factorial over 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial. And in general, we define this symbol to mean n factorial, where the sum of all these n's gives you the top to be n1 factorial times n2 factorial, n sub k factorial. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the multinomial distribution. Okay. Well, what do I want to say about this is when we looked at the binomial distribution, we looked at really what happened in the binomial case is we typically had two, two probabilities, success or failure. We call this probability, say, P. For the moment now, suppose I called it P1. And the probability of failure was P2 which turns out to be one minus P1. Remember, it was the complement. So now suppose I have um, more than two possibilities. For example, suppose the possibilities are A, B, or C, or I have four possibilities. So in the multinomial distribution, suppose I have n possibilities. And the first one comes out with probability 1. The second one would have probability 2. And the last one would have probability n. And of course, the sum of all the probabilities must total 1. Then it's not hard to uh, ask the following question. So let x1 equal to the number of number one occurrences. And I'll illustrate uh, with an example in a second. X2 would be the number of number two occurrences and so on. X sub n would be the number of number n occurrences. And they all have respective probabilities, P1, P2, up through P sub n. And I might ask the following question. What's the probability that x1 is n1, x2 is n2, and x sub k is n sub k? Remember, in the binomial, technically speaking, if I ask what's the probability that x equals k for the binomial, what I'm really asking is the success is k. I'll call y the failure is really n minus k. But I don't really need to say there because there are only two possibilities. So if I know one, I automatically know the other. Now, I don't think it's, it's a hard stretch for you to realize the answer to this problem will turn out to be very simple. It will turn out to be n, n1, n2, n sub k, p1 to the n1, p2 to the n2, and so on, p sub k to the n sub k. 
This is nothing more than a generalization of the binomial. For example, I give the following example. Um, plus a die 21 times. Um, determine the probability of obtaining uh, let's see a one three times a a two four times a three, two times, a four, one, a five, six times, a seven, or there is no seven, a six, six times. Let me make sure these add up right. So six and six is 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 19, and 3, something's wrong. Um, a 1, 3 times. A 2, 4 times. A 3, 2 times. A 4 once. A 5, 6 times. And a 6, 5 times. Now we add them. Okay. Now it turns out in this problem, all the probabilities are the same. Namely, this probability is a 6. This probability is a six, and so on. So the solution to this problem is the probability that x1 equals three, x2 equals four, x3 equals two, x4 equals one, x5 equals six, and x6 equals five, is equal to 21, choose, what is it? Three, four, two, one, six, five. The first probability, which happens to be one six, is to the third power. The second probability, which also happens to be one six, is to the fourth power. The third probability, which happens to be one six, is to the second power. Uh, what's the next one? The next probability, uh, which is 1, 6, is to the first power, 1, 2, 3, 4. The next probability, which is 1, 6, is to the sixth power. And the last probability, which is 1, 6, is to the fifth power. And whatever this answer is, it's not really interesting. I, I do the answer for you. But maybe I should illustrate this um, one other way, with one other example, okay, uh, for a simpler example. I have an urn. I have 20 red, 30 blue, and uh, let's say 50 yellow. Um, choose 10 marbles with replacement. Now that means when I say with replacement, that means after you take a marble, you note its color. Okay, you note its color. Um, and then you put it back in the urn, you mix the urn again real well, and you choose another one at random. That means that nothing changes. So anytime I choose a marble, the probability that I get a red marble at any time and at any drawing would be 20 out of 100, or 0.2. The probability that I get a blue marble anytime is 30 out of 100, is 0.3. And the probability that I get a yellow marble at any time is 0.5. Now, n is 10. Let x1 be the number of red. Let x2 be the number of blue, and let x3 be the number of yellow. 
So now let me ask a problem. What's the probability uh, I get three red, five blue, and two yellow? Well, this is a clearly a multinomial problem because all the probabilities stay the same. And this would be 10, choose three. The problem I get red is 0.2 cubed. The problem I get blue is 0.3 to the fifth, 0.5 squared. And whatever this is, that would be the answer. Okay, so this illustrates the multinomial distribution as well. I've just completed section 2.12, so you now can complete any of the exercises in 2.12. We're going to, let me just uh, get rid of this, okay. Um, okay, we're back to uh, the real world here. So on, we're going to meet on Wednesday at the normal time. I will record that session as well. And on Wednesday, I'm going to begin continuous distributions, which means you should remember how to differentiate well, and you need to remember how to integrate basic integrals. Um, I know most of you do not have calculus too, so you don't know integration by parts. So I don't really need to use it. I'll try to avoid it. I may do it once. I may teach it along the way. So. Um, We'll be all set. We will meet on Wednesday. Does anybody have any closing questions, things they want to ask? Anyone? Yeah, um, I couldn't find the the answer for the exam that you said you posted. Where is that? Uh, we're sending you an email and I'll send you the link again, okay? So it's not on Blackboard? No, I the, the link probably uh, disappeared. I'll send you the link again. Okay, thanks. So yeah, because I am... I, I, um, <laughs> I have the link, so usually everything I post disappears within you know 24 hours or something after we do it. But remind me, and I'll send it to you, Tatiana. Okay. Okay. And then I also wanted to ask. You said that for the fine or for the next exam that we are getting a formula sheet. You said, right now it would it would be the formula sheet on page 165. It's very possible that it would be the formula sheet on page. Uh, uh, if you look at the end of the book. Uh, on page, there's a more extensive one in case we need it that has some other cases as well. There's a more extensive formula sheet um, on page 274. And I'll probably attach that. I assume we'll get some of the other ones as well. So okay. I will actually give you on the next exam the formula sheet on page 274. Okay. That. And that'll also be on your final exam as well. I will give you that sheet. I don't want you wasting your time memorizing formulas that ultimately you would forget down the road. It's important you understand how we get them, but there's no need for you to memorize them. But um, I just want to make sure our previous exams, they were closed book and we couldn't. This will be closed book as well. I'm going to give you the sheet as part of the exam. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Okay. Um, is there anybody here who can't make the, except for the one person who told me, who can't make the extra class on Wednesday? Professor, uh, <clears throat> Wednesday morning, same time, right? 1045. Yes, I will send, I will, I will post on Blackboard and send you, you'll get uh, the Zoom link. It'll be the same time as if we're meeting and I will begin to chapter, uh, chapter three at that time. Okay, and that's optional? The chapter's not optional. Uh, I'm doing the meeting because everybody said they can make it. And I'm going to record it as well. There's one person who wasn't able to do it. Okay. I mean, okay. I, can, I can be there, but... Um, I'm sorry, can you be there? I can. Fine, then there's no problem. Everybody else can as well. If there were a problem, I would have looked to schedule another one. I'm looking uh, probably later on down the road before the final exam. I may want to schedule an extra review for you. And I may choose another day to do that, like on a Thursday during club hour or something like that. We'll talk about that later on, but I'd like to give you guys extra stuff if I can. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, everybody. I'll, so I'm going to, right now I'm going to, uh, in about 10 minutes, the link will be active for Wednesday. I'll let you, I'll send it, not active, I'll send you the link for Wednesday. Okay, are we good? 
Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, have a great okay, day, I'll sir. I'll see you then. Have a good day. We'll see you. Bye.